think about animals that have sharp claws, we think about lions and tigers and cheetahs and cats and dogs and, you know, all those animals, they run pretty fast and, you know, they do climb and those claws are there for them to be able to eat and claw their food. Hooves on horse and antelopes will allow them to run faster and more easily over hard prairie ground. A hoof is just one large toenail that supports the entire foot and leg. So I remember in the video they were talking about um, a bull, uh, whether or not if it would be able to survive in many environments. And remember it said they would have most likely survive in a hard prairie ground because um, the hoof is um has better has better what is the word i'm looking for grip on the um on the ground versus if it was you know in somewhere that was snowy or somewhere that had a lot of water so the sucker like feed on a gecko lizard allows it to climb to objects to hide from predators or to wait for food and the grasping feet of tree monkeys allow them to swing from limb to limb so these are all feed adaptations for animals. So again, we talked about how web feet help a swimmers catch food or escape. Hoof animals can run faster on prairies. All right, let's talk about limb adaptations. So flippers on penguins and seals are adaptations that allow these animals to swim rapidly, uh, either to find food or to escape a predator. So if we look right here, these fins on these penguins, they not only allow for them to swim rapidly, but they also help with balance as well. Um, they help with balance and um, again, they help them to swim faster. All right, so the strong backs, legs of rabbits, kangaroos, and cheetahs allow the animals to leap and jump long distances, either to escape predators or to catch prey. So the hind legs in the back of this jackrabbit is going to allow for it to hop quickly away from predators and also be able to, um, to get food as well, to compete for food. All right, so mouth adaptations. When we talk about mouth, we mostly just talk about teeth and beaks on birds. So an animal's teeth will, an animal's teeth will often indicate its source of food. When we talk about, um, herpivores and carnivores. We also talk about, you know, what kind of teeth they have. So sharp teeth reveal a carnivore, a meat eater. So carnivores are always going to have sharp teeth. And flat teeth like this cow um, for grinding food belong to a herpivore. So um, when they have flat teeth, it helps them better to grind the plant, plants between their mouths, uh, between their teeth, I mean. All right, the beaks of birds vary depending on, according to their diet. So we have short beaks that help break nuts and then long beaks catches fish. All right, so the crane right here has a long narrow beak to reach deep into the water for small fish. And a finch has a small powerful beak for cracking nuts and seeds. All right, so predators such as eagles and hawks have curved sharp beaks for tearing chunks of flesh from their prey. So their beaks are a lot different than the finch and the crane. All right, so the fence adaptations, these are mostly like animals who are trying to camouflage, um, mini cray, or appear big. So by having a color or shape that blends with the environment, camouflage, the organism is better able to hide from its enemy and stalk its prey. So like this green lizard, who's hiding among the plants is camouflaging itself so that it will be able to hide from predators. A lizard can change skin color to blend in with its, in, uh, with its environment. A baby deer has spots to hide from its predators. An Arctic hare is white in the winter to blend in with snow-covered terrain. All right, so sometimes an animal resembles another organism or its surroundings to better survive, which is a mini cray, like the insect uh, right here that looks like a leaf, that looks like a leaf, um, while other insects resemble a stick to hide themselves. So this uh, is resembling a leaf so that it will be able to hide from its predator. 
All right, the dragon seahorse resembles, it's right here, a leafy um, aquatic plant to hide from predators. Some animals try to appear larger to scare off predators, such as cats arching its back. So anytime you see a cat arching its back, yes, you know, sometimes it's scared, but nine out of 10 times it's trying to appear bigger. Say for example, a dog comes up to it and is trying to like, um, trying to hurt it, it's gonna arch its back and hiss at it so it can, per so it can appear to be bigger than the dog. All right, temperature adaptations. So for colder regions such as the North Pole and South Poles, animals like the polar or seals have layers of rubber underneath thick skin to protect them from ice and freezing water. In hot regions, animals have adapted to a small size such as the kangaroo mouse or thick skin such as scorpions to prevent water loss. Migration is an, ad, is an adaptation to extreme temperatures and reduced food supplies during winter. So for example, these Arctic uh, tern, gray, uh, Arctic tern, gray, uh, gray whale, African elephant, they all migrate long distance due to seasonal changes. So I don't know if you've seen movies like The Land Before Time or um, that's a dinosaur movie or um, what's another movie? That's the only one that came to my head. But usually, like, you'll see if you watch a lot of animal movies. Oh, Ice Age is a very good example. Um, you will see how they have to migrate to another area or another region to look for food. Because in Ice Age, what happens, like, everything is iced over. So they have to go find something warmer because it's cold where they're at. Hibernation is another adaptation to seasonal changes. Example, like this bear. That, is, um, that slows down its body function during winter hibernation. So bears, bats, squirrels, and frogs slow down their metabolism, which is their body functions to hibernate during the winter. So during the spring, during the fall, they're eating all this food, all this food, so that when winter comes, they can just go and they can sleep during the winter because they know that they will not be able to survive the winter. So they go and they hibernate all winter so that um, when spring and summer come, they know that they'll be able to survive. All right, so going back to our questions to consider, we're going to answer them. So why are adaptations important? Why do you think adaptations are important? All right, so adaptations allow for plants and animals to thrive and reproduce, or we can just say, they allow for animals and plants to survive. What types of adaptation is best for an animal that uses its feet to catch prey, right? So this, this animal will be known as a predator and it's trying to catch its prey, which adaptation would be best for it, right? So it having claws would be able, it would be more beneficial for it to catch its prey if it had claws. So what type of adaptation is best for an animal that swims on the water? So think about ducks, think about um, geeses, penguins, what type of adaptation is best for an animal that swims on the water? Right, webbed feet, right? So what are the consequences that would occur if animals did not have adaptations? So if these animals didn't have, you know, feed adaptation, mouth adaptation, limb adaptation, um, defense. What would happen to these animals if they didn't have any adaptations? Right, so they would not, uh, animals that did not develop adaptations, they would become extinct. They would most likely be prey to a lot of predators because they have no way of surviving. What adaptations do humans have for survival? So think of us, think of what we have in order to survive to and how we adapt to our environments. Right, so it can be various of things. So we have posable thumbs, we have the ability to walk upright, we have large brains, we have eyelashes, we have teeth, we have nose, we have skin, all those things help us to survive. 
All right, you guys. So this is the end of the PowerPoint. I will see you. I will see you tomorrow with an activity. I hope you learned a lot with this PowerPoint. And goodbye for now.